Hey, welcome in. It's the leans, the locks, the weekend edition here. I got gotcha you for Saturday's games. Only four games to get into. So we're going to dive in, see what we can pull from here, see what makes the most sense across the board, money lines, spreads, what have you. The biggest thing that we want, though, from you, and it's only going to be a couple of small little things, right? Thumbs up button, subscribe, you know, the typical stuff that people are asking of you across any really YouTube channel, especially the fastest growing sports betting community across the YouTube platform. The other thing we want you to do is, and the time will tell, right, as far as how long this promo will be out there, it's probably not going to last long at all. We want you to sign up at BetMGM. All right. So before we dive into everything, there's a link below. Click it, please. It's going to bring you on over to BetMGM. Sign up. It's going to take you 90 seconds to sign up. That's it. Deposit $10 and only $10. That's all $10. Just put in $10. From there, I want you to place a money line wager of the World Cup on Japan to beat Costa Rica. That's Sunday, 5 a.m. Eastern. That's it. Just put Japan $10 to beat Costa Rica. As soon as any team on Sunday scores a goal, that 10 is going to turn into $200. Not bad, ladies and gentlemen. Not bad at all when you get an opportunity like that to start off with a serious bankroll. And that's exactly what we're doing. All right. Speaking of what we're doing, let's dive into it. Four games on the NBA slate, and we begin in Toronto. All right, let's start with the Raptors hosting the Mavericks. Raptors, uh, you know, what, what's going on with this Toronto team, right? Are, are they a really good team in the East? Are they a struggling team in the East? They don't really know quite yet. There's been some injuries, and that's been a major problem, them trying to have to skate around that, and that's hurt their rotation, clearly. But you've got a Mavericks team who is basically... Luka Doncic and Spencer Dinwiddie. And then if it's Tim Hardaway or anybody off the bench that wants to show up. But DFS, RB, those dudes are cooked. And at least this season they are. Mavericks aren't getting anything at all from anybody really outside of the two that I mentioned. And it's tough. The Raptors at least are running through rotations that seem to be more the norm with guys who have missed games or have been banged up. You know, Van Vliet's out for extended or if Siakam is out now, right? Whatever it may be, then you've got lineups. You've got rotations at least that have played somewhat together. It's not a new phenomenon here. Dallas is just trying to figure things out. They're desperate. And they don't come into Toronto and knock off the Raptors. This is a money line play here for the Toronto Raptors to win this thing outright. First play for us. We love it. Love it. Lock it up. The Raptors win this game money line outright. Let's move to Houston now. Rockets hosting the Thunder. Both of these teams played last night. The Rockets had a big win for them. It was only, what, their fourth, right? Pretty big win for them at home against the Hawks. Got Trey's in town. You had all this different uh, fanfare going on with this game. And, hey, the Rockets got one. Fantastic. Congratulations. Can you do it again? Another night back-to-back in against a tougher opponent. Why are they a tougher opponent? Not because the Oklahoma City Thunder are better than the Houston Rockets because the Oklahoma City Thunder are not good enough to take anybody lightly. And that's a theme. That is a recurring theme here going on where we have everything happening across the board. The Thunder and the Rockets, all things equal right now. The Thunder have played tougher competition. The Thunder have hung in there. The Thunder have just been a better basketball team overall. So that's a pretty big determining, discerning factor. For me, at least, in this game. That's why I lean Thunder, and I have no problem laying the 140, 130 on the money line, depending on what you find the best. Uh, we'll lean Thunder money line here. Look, they're a bad team, so it's hard to lock them up against another bad team. There is some volatility that we have to take into account, but I love what we're going here, which is just going through it. All right, going through it here with the process, and that would indicate that the Thunder are simply a just hair even better than the Rockets, and that's what we'll do. Two down, two to go. Let's move to San Antonio. Didn't we just see this game against these two teams? I, I thought so. Didn't we just see this? It's deja vu all over again. And in this case, what has happened to this total? It's ballooned up. We're sitting at 230 right now, and I have to be honest, I don't see it. 
Now, 225, you want to push into the mid to maybe low 220s? I, okay, I, I can agree with that. I can definitely get behind that. But, you know, the other part of it, too, is where are we looking at everything now in this game that would indicate that this is going to be a 250 or, or 255 total, that you're going to smash this? I don't think you smash, so let's work in reverse. You're probably hovering. Now, in this case, where are you going to lean that you're going to get the same two teams that played against each other that were, what, playing conservative the first time because they knew this isn't the playoffs? This isn't something that you would look at from a playoff standpoint and say, oh, right, 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 right. Two teams hunkering down. This is just mid to end November. Get the hell out of here, man. Get the hell out of this back-to-back -back scenario. It's going to be tough for the Lakers to beat the Spurs. And with that said, I wouldn't take the Spurs. We just lean under. Go under 230, 230 and a half. What are you doing? Lean because, again, you've got volatility with bad teams. Lean it. Lean the under. Now, let's get into one final game here. We'll go to Phoenix. This will be a lock. It will be the same play, but it will be a lock. Both of these teams also coming off games where the Jazz just got beat up in the first quarter, and that was it. Like, just smashed to bits by the Warriors in the first quarter. It was a rough one. Disgraceful effort if you had the Jazz plus seven, seven and a half, even if you gave them out on a video. My God, what are you thinking? What are you doing? It was a tough one. But what I really like about this game, I think more so than anything, is looking at how good the Jazz are defensively, how they can hang in this game. They do come off a really disappointing first quarter, but that was it. I mean, outside of that first quarter, this was a game in which they hung and, and ultimately in certain areas were beating the Warriors. So this is a motivated team. This is not a team that knows better. Jordan Clarkson and Laurie Markinen, and now Mike Conley being banged up, but you know those two guys aren't going over to younger cats on this team and being like, "Hey, man, we got a long trip here." Or the coach isn't coming in and be like, "Yeah, you know, Jordan's out, Laurie's out. It's just load management, fellas. We got a long trek here." This team doesn't know any better. They are trying to win every single game out there. Phoenix, the appearance is that they are. But if you saw last night, I mean, that's as easy as it is to take a night off and still beat a team. That spread was ridiculous. We told you about that on the five and five, how 12 and a half was absurd for the Pistons. And you had to take that. In this case, it's a similar scenario, but it's moving against us. So I don't want to take the spread right now. I'd rather just go under the total. Again, we see a total that sits at 230, a little north of that, depending on where you want to shop the best number. It doesn't add up for me. Both of these teams are coming off games last night where they weren't just pacing themselves for tonight's game, right? Different story. You come off a game where you're taking, like Phoenix, I promise you, was not just pacing themselves against the Pistons to put it all out on the table against the Jazz. I think the Phoenix Suns are going to put out that similar strategy that we saw against the uh, with the Warriors against the Jazz, which is end this thing with a knockout punch in the first and slowly, methodically get through that game with a nice defensive hovering, if you will. And the Jazz are going to score some points, don't get me wrong, but both of these teams, I trust their defensive prowess more so than anything else. All right, we appreciate you rolling with us as always. We'll be back with a full slate Sunday. Make no mistake, we're going to knock this sucker out of the park. Four games, four plays on a light Saturday. So don't worry, we have you covered, and we're going to continue to do this seven days a week, Lindy Monday through Friday, me Saturday, Sunday. Appreciate you rolling with us. A couple of things, thumbs up, subscribe. Oh, by the way, what are you doing? $10 turns into $200. So I need to tell you again, click that link below, sign up. It'll take you 90 seconds. Put your information and it'll take another 60 seconds. Deposit $10, right? That's it. So you're talking about what? Two minutes and 30 seconds max. And I'm giving you a, an extra allotment of time. It should take less than that. And then you're good to go. You're golden. You're ready. You can turn that $10 into $200. Just put your pan on the money line in your bet slip. Bet $10. Don't worry about that payout. I promise as soon as the team scores a goal on Sunday, you're going to be 10 into 200 richer.